All right, I know many people are excited for me to get this rather expensive in Canadian dollars kit getting going. This is the Cross RC UC6 and I have already been hard at work because there is lots to be done and not all of it is entertaining, let me tell you that. Well, to me, maybe the builder it's entertaining, not to the viewer. So check it out. This is step one. Step one is just really putting together the spare tire. Look at this. This is the spare tire beadlock. It's a plastic beadlock. Yes, it actually does uh, function as a beadlock, but it is a plastic rim. Why is that important? Well, apart from the incredibly nice tire, it's very soft. There is the size of it right on the side so you can have a good look at it. It's got a good compound. The treads aren't very deep so it concerns me about mud and or snow, but that's not a big deal. In fact, check it out. Here is a Cross RC tire that is completed. This is a complete beadlock wheel all the way around, but it is a multi-piece beadlock wheel. Forgive the extra thread lock you see uh, that's uh, just around the holes there. You'll understand that in a moment more. These are weighted. Well, that didn't sound good as I bounced it off the other tire. Weighted. Same with the, all of them are. In fact, look at this, this axle cover right here comes off. It's got a nice little gasket on it, a metal cover. You want to make sure not to lose that out on the trail. It would be too bad, but that's actually going to cover up the uh, the lock nut you uh, use to put that onto your axle. But first things first, you have to build all of these. Uh, and I thought I would leave one for the end just so you guys could kind of see it. Uh, or one at the end of what I was doing so you can see at the beginning what's best. Sorry, I've got, yes, this is a piece of my Cabelco excavator, the door that has um, some uh, Loctite on it, thread lock. It's just a little pin. I was working on it earlier. I had the door out, thought, hey, why not? One RC to the next. Uh, so this is the last tire I have. They already come with the beadlock ring on the inside and the foams as well. You have to be very careful when you're putting together beadlocks like this. If you're not careful and if you don't do it properly, what happens here? Do I have any of them that really did it? You can have the bead start to slide out. I'll have to do this one again. The reason that happened is because I didn't use the four screws that are longer uh, to help me set it properly. What do I mean by that? I'll show you. This little supplemental sheet, which was in the instructions, of course, I didn't look at it until two tires in, actually shows that you're supposed to be using three longer screws to kind of cinch everything together because the actual screws you're going to be using are much shorter. So you'll have to cinch the beadlock together with those three screws and nuts, then place the rest of them all around them, then back out those nuts and screws, and then fill them in with the rest. Confusing? Not really, once you kind of get it. And what they're telling you here is make sure you're paying attention to the direction of the tire because three tires should be facing this way with your pattern going out and, you, and your uh, hub being on the outside. And then of course you should have three going the opposite way because it's on the other side of your vehicle. So remember, when you're doing your tires, make sure you're doing the direction properly, just like this. So outside, Tread and then outside again. So the last one I'm going to be doing right now is uh, going on the uh, uh, right hand side, which would be the passenger side in North America. Uh, so uh, look at let's look at the pieces here. The ring is already on the inside. Here is the inside inside hub. So I know that's going to be going like that, right? Because that's where this heavy weight comes in. This is a, a, a beautiful weight, already comes painted, powder coated it looks like. This is what you're going to be putting on the inside and putting the screws through the back where the head of the screw is countersunk here and then the, the shaft is coming through these holes. Now don't worry it all fell apart but just to show you this, this plate goes on top. So to be less confusing, off camera I did this so you can see. There is three bolts going through. I have not cinched them all the way down. In fact, I just want to make sure that my bead, which is that outside lip, is absolutely perfect all the way around the ring. 
The reason I want to do that is because just like in full size vehicles, you want to tighten the lug bolts down in a star pattern. That way it keeps any one side of the bead from kind of slipping out or having uneven uh, screws going through. But like I made, like I said, make sure to have enough uh, thread lock on your screws or when you're out on the trail, you're going to have your bead locks pop apart and it'll kind of ruin your day when you're out there. It, it'll be hard to fix. So uh, what I'm going to do right now is cinch these down just a little bit more and then drop all the screws with bead lock uh, or with thread lock uh, uh, already on it. And then I'll just be able to uh, put all this, uh, the nuts on. Once all your uh, nuts are in place, then start to remove the longer screws and then you're done. And once you get it as close as you can, and you're never going to get it perfect no matter what you do, right? You're always going to have something kind of trying to squeeze out on the side. This one had a little bit of it on the inside, but not too bad. I'm fairly happy with that. And now I have six uh, weighted wheels and a spare tire. So that's good. I'll wrap up the video and kind of show you uh, what I did with the axles so far. Okay, so off camera, if you guys watch the first section of my unboxing video, you would see that these um, axles were actually uh, uh, unpainted. And I went ahead and painted them in a beautiful uh, dark gray. Look at that, still taped up on the end. Oh, I missed that one spot. Oh well, that's okay. Look at that, all the way around. I'll touch that up. But I gave it multiple layers. And I just did it on a small turntable, right? I turned it, I made sure it was sticking basically like that. So it was just on all points. I removed the red uh, cap, of course. And then as I sprayed it, moved it around, I was able to do basically the, other thi the same thing on the other side. I just happened to miss that with the downstroke. No worries, same thing with the middle one. You'll notice that the middle axle is gonna be a powered axle, and so this is just tape on either side. Here, I'll take them off so you can see where the drive shafts attach. Hey, and as a side note, I want you to know, like you'd be like, why is this such a short video? I get that, but be prepared if you're building something like this. Six tires with uh, beadlock wheels is going to take a long time. It's 10 uh, screws each, uh, 10 nuts as well. Uh, so set aside about a good 45 minutes to an hour just to do those. Another thing to note about these, I already, prior to painting them, I already opened up every single screw uh, and opened up these back uh, covers as well as looking at the bearings on the inside. I packed it full of moo uh, or utter butter. I was going to say moo slick from Cow RC, but it's actually utter butter, which is basically a marine grease, a waterproof grease that goes in and around the axles and the bearings because for me at the time of this filming, winter is coming up. And even if it wasn't in winter it would be springtime and I love to play in the water I'm basically like a golden retriever around water and RC they are going in so yeah I just want to mention all the grease so you don't have any issues with your bearing season up either and the front one I'm not sure there we go so the spindles will go up front for steering because obviously it's only the front one that does the steering but there we can pretty much see where the drivetrain will go so here to here to here and then of course the wheels which are absolutely beautiful they're a very sticky rubber and they feel nice and of course being beadlocks they're sealed so i'm not going to have to worry about any water or slush getting in on the inside i'm just going to quickly mount these up here are two of the drivers this will be like the adapter that fits into the back of the tire so let's see the back here for a moment so there's the 12 mil hex adapter. This is the hex adapter that's gonna be going in that metal on metal, guys. So no rounded out uh, adapter to worry about. Like uh, normally plastic ones, you, you sometimes have to worry that they round out and then you lose your drive capacity. Not with these, just gotta get the drive pin now. Let's get these out here. These are the drive pins if you've never seen a drive pin before. This is what actually rotates the tire uh, and goes through a hole in the axle or axle stub. So that is what actually transfers the power from the differential out to the axle stub. And then I'll put the adapter on the end. And then a wheel nut. 
Thank you. So adapter and then the wheel nut on the inside and then I want to replace the end of the axle with the cover and it has a little a little notch here and a little notch on the cover itself to let you know exactly where it goes there like that. Well, when everything is said and done, my friends, there it is. The new Cross RC IUC6. I standing for invisible. I think this is going to be one of the most expensive kits on the market today, probably upwards of $2,000, but hey, you're paying for the invisible technology. Wouldn't you agree? It's something that's new hitting the market. Heck, we would almost pay $10,000 if this was a new plasma screen TV. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I just date myself a little bit there? I meant to say tube TV. How about a nice big projection? I'm just frigging with you. Look at this. All of uh, this is looking fantastic, except my drive axle is backwards. There, all for all the OCD people. I know you're all like shouting at the screen. Your middle drive, your middle, your middle drive axle is backwards. You're gonna drive me crazy. <laughs> Guys, hopefully you're uh, enjoying the build so far. Let me know. Leave me a like. Click down below. Or heck, if you'd hate this build, leave me a dislike. It doesn't matter. And leave the comments down below to either one. Are, are you guys into 6x6s at all? I read a few comments before saying that 6x6s didn't do it for some of you. But then there was others that said the more wheels, the more fun. So I want to know. We'll see you in the next episode of RC Adventures. Now get outside and have fun with RC. Or if it's cold, stay inside. And build one. Bye.